This podcast is brought to you by the School of Advanced Study, University of London. Okay, thanks very much. Um, fingers crossed on the drilling. <laughs> okay, um, everyone seems to be apologising before their um, speech starts, so uh, <laughs> uh, I'll make a few apologies. I'm not actually an archivist. Um, I'm not a global historian either. Um, my PhD thesis was on labour relations in Swindon railway works, so that was pretty local. Uh, and the furthest I've got out of the country is uh, working on the official history of uh, the Channel Tunnel. So I got to France, but that's about it. Um, however, I'm chair of the Business Archives Council, so you should take anything I say with caution because I'm biased about uh, the value of business archives. Um, I'm not going to have a big reveal, uh, that's my conclusion. All business archives are potentially part of the global archive. Um, obviously I'm going to have a bit of argument building up to that, but uh, just so that to leave you in no doubt, or in case the drilling starts again <laughs> later on, uh, that's what my argument is. Um, in getting to that, I'll just say a bit about um, global business history. I'll say a bit about global businesses. Does that actually give us any insight into the value of business archives? Um, and then I'll actually talk about business archives in relation to the global archive, in particular about how they're used. And I'm going to say that use is quite important. And also, why are business archives important compared to any other archives? Well, obviously, in global and international history, businesses have always played a big part in that. So. Um, I'm making a case there for business archives uh, in particular. Okay, so if we look at our global business history, um, do we get any help from this? Well, I've been thinking about this and I'm wondering, well, is global business history different from international business history? Um, if you look at books about global economic development, they're at a very aggregate level. If you look in the sources, you don't see any references to business archives particularly, because obviously a lot of that work would need to be done at a smaller level. So I think it's quite hard to have an encompassing global business history that uses business archives alone. As I say, does global business history differ from international business history? There's a lot of international business history, which tends to be of a comparative nature. So that might be one way in. Um, and I'll also highlight something else. The World Business History Conference, there's an event going on next month in Frankfurt, um, where they're going to be considering um, global world business history. And this is a sort of pre-conference to an event that's going to be taking place in 2016 um, in Norway. Now, I've looked at the papers, and they seem to me, actually, there are quite a lot of local comparative studies which are brought together uh, under some sort of encompassing themes. There's nothing particularly relating to business archives. Uh, so there's no strand on the use of business archives in global business history. OK, what about um, global businesses? Well, you may think, if you want to find a global um, business archive, then look for a global business. So uh, business historians, I don't know if you know, spend a lot of time worrying about what big business is, what international business is. So we could come up with some characteristics of global businesses uh, which may help us in trying to determine uh, what a global business is. So is a global business the same as inter international business? Well, probably not, because you could be an international business but only have your sphere of operation in Europe. I don't know if that makes you global. Um, obviously, you might want to be a multinational company. That might be helpful. Um, for business historians, if there are any in the room, Alfred D. Chandler is the sort of doyen of business history uh, who espoused the visible hand, the multidivisional um, makeup of business, uh, international structure. So that's another thing that may denote a global business. Operations across continents, bases in different countries, recognisable world brands, products, components. Uh, you probably think they're going to be large. Um, do they need to do more than sell globally? So you could be a small company based in Britain. You sell around the world. Does that make you a global business if you don't have some of those other characteristics? I'm not sure. Anyway, here's some examples. You could probably think of lots more. Coca-Cola, Microsoft, Unilever, all of these big global companies. But the thing is with that, 
that's a bit too predictable and it's a bit too narrow. So personally, I'm going to be quite disappointed if we decide that in fact global business archives are only held by global businesses. Um, so to sort of reiterate that really, we look at global business history, we look at global businesses, I don't think it really offers us much insight uh, into what global business archives are. Um, we get bogged down in definitions, um, it's all rather vague. So what about if we um, look at it from the uh, business archive side? Now, we could be a corporate archive, uh, sort of, in effect a private archive, or it could be business records that are held by another repository. So uh, National Archive has got lots of railway company records. Uh, London Metropolitan Archive has got a lot of business records. So those are two sort of forms that they could come in. Uh, and if we think about um, the archive side, um, how might we see it there? So the archives of a global business. Now, I've spoken to a few people. There's only one company uh, or operation that people say is definitely a global business, and that is HSBC. Uh, and in fact, so much so, they've even got a global head of archives uh, as a job title in HSBC. So um, that's a sort of obvious, um, the archives of a global business. Um, we may then have the archives of, say, a more locally based business, which we don't think is global under whatever definition, which has a global product, or it's got uh, global operations, or it's got a global impact in some way. So I work at the Bank of England archive. Uh, although we're based in Threadneedle Street, uh, lots of the activities that the bank has done through history have been global in nature. And in fact, it's often been described as the sort of financial intelligence unit of the Foreign Office. So they did a lot of um, work around countries and overseas. Um, so, OK, so that might make the Bank of England a global business archive, but we could take other banks like, say, Rothschilds or Bearings or Schroders. I'm not just saying that because I can see someone in the room from Schroders. Um, those organisations based in this country, they may not have business uh, offices in other parts of the world, but the impact of their investments is felt across the world. And we could think of other business archives as well, like uh, British Telecom or M&S or John Lewis, where we think of them as, as ostensibly British company, but they have a global impact in what they do. And their archives are actually, uh, the use of their archives has a global impact as well. We could also think of the archives of a local business or a local institution or something that's based in this country which are used globally, i.e. the archives are used globally. So we get lots of people coming to the Bank of England archive and no doubt lots of other business archives or the TNA or whatever, they come to this country to look at the archives and they may actually be researching um, something to do with the United Kingdom or something to do with the rest of the world. But ostensibly, although the archives are actually locally based, they're actually doing something which may be used globally. And I mean used globally as in they're sort of, um, the researchers are based globally. They may not actually be doing global history, but they're just using it on a global basis. So I want to make a point, I think, that use, it's how the business archives are used. I mean, it could be how any archives are used, but I'm particularly interested in business archives. It's how the business archives are used that determines uh, whether they're global or not. And that could be used by the holder of the records or by uh, the researchers. So what do I mean by use? Well, okay, in what ways might people interact with business archives? Um, this could be a local or a community area, it could be with your customers, it could be with your workers or former workers or academics, researchers across the world. And corporate archives may differ in how they actually pursue these interactions from, say, the way the National Archives or local record offices would do. So if you're a business with um, some corporate social responsibility ambitions, you may want to actually link with your local community to say how you fit in, how your archive, how your business is of use to that community. Um, OK, there may be some global element. You may be able to find a sort of worldwide community, but often it tends to be quite local. And I think actually one of the things I want to stress is that uh, often the way that these business archives are used is very local in nature. 
The global span might be recognised in a sort of curious, oh, isn't it interesting that this was used worldwide? But often there's a strong emphasis on sort of curation or presentation that's in local in nature. Um, so one of the examples I'm thinking of and why my, um, uh, the, my talk was called Spanning the World. So Dorman and Long uh, is a steel and engineering company uh, that was based in Middlesbrough. Now, there's one very well-known fact about Dorman and Long. Uh, which is that they built the Sydney Harbour Bridge. So does that make them a global company? Uh, well, it may do. But if you look at the way their archives are presented, um, there's a throwaway line about, oh, we built the Sydney Harbour Bridge. But actually, a lot of it is my great-grandfather worked in that factory. He lived down the road. There's actually a very local element to that. If you go to the New South Wales uh, online archive. There's lots of stuff about the Sydney Harbour Bridge, but again, it's quite locally based, even though, in fact, there is a link uh, to the Dorman and Long uh, digital archives as well. Um, similarly, um, quite a few, well, the black country in particular, uh, often brands itself Workshop of the World. They've had a few projects based on Workshop of the World. Um, so the products of Smethwick or Oldbury or Tipton or whatever were exported all over the world. But again, the way that's presented is quite local and quite locally based in terms of relatives worked in that area. So in fact, I think there's a strong element that, of a sense that archives, even of global businesses, can actually be used in, and I didn't know Clem was going to use the word parochial, uh, but in quite a parochial way. I don't mean that in a pejorative sense, I just mean actually in quite a localised way. Now, something's changed all of this though, um, and it's a move to digital. And along the way, uh, and this picks up on the things that some other people have said, um, online catalogues. So we've gone from a position where people don't really know what's in the Bank of England archive unless they visit the bank and look at the catalogue to actually they can search the online catalogue and lots of archives have done that. So the first step to globalising business archives and any other archives is online catalogues. Uh, the second step is the growth in social media whether it's Twitter, Facebook, Flickr, whatever. Those are other things that allow you to um, globalise your collection. Now, what I particularly had in mind, though, is the digitisation of paper records. So, does this make the uh, business archive global? Well, of course it does. Um, and actually, Clem didn't steal one of the statistics I'm about to use, which is the TNA has 170 million downloaded documents last year, which is an incredible figure. Um, the Bank of England had about 9,000, but obviously we're a bit smaller. But the sort of level of interest that those documents can bring is really huge. But are all those downloads, is all this availability material online, are these business archives being used to write global histories uh, in the sense that we may define? Uh, or are we just seeing the globalisation of more local history, i.e. people in Australia can do their family history in Australia without having to come here? There's also an issue about uh, the impact on the archivist and the user in terms of their relationship, which um, we might have time to discuss later. Anyway, does this matter? Speaking to you as the chair of the Business Archives Council, who thinks that business archives are fantastic, um, should I really worry about precisely how the records are being used, whether they're being used for some encompassing global history or local history? in this newly globalised world? Well, of course it doesn't matter, because it's about opportunities. So anything that allows business records to be used uh, is good in my book. So it gives us an opportunity to create new worldwide audiences for business archives and any other archive that we may want to pursue. It allows an enhanced use of existing types of global business archive. So for instance, if we take uh, the Bering Archive, which would have been used in a traditional way, They've had all the prospectuses of their big share issues issued, and now they're all available for anyone to use. So that's how an existing type of global business archive is enhanced. Um, crucially, it means that business archives, which only may in the past had a very limited sphere of operation, we may not afford to as being global archives, are now potentially part of that global archive. And an example here might be Network Rail. Now, their operations are very much based in this country. And in fact, until recently, they didn't even have an archive you can visit. But they have got an online archive, which is fantastic. And anyone around the world, 
is now possible to see their records. So that's something that was a, uh, an operation, a business that had a very limited sphere of operation, which now has a global outreach in its records. Okay, so to conclude, I, I we, we want to encourage the widest possible use of business archives. I think um, technology is allowing for opportunities that are greater than ever before. And importantly, we can be neutral about how they're used, um, and that might be whether it's uh, locally used, globally used, any shade of history, research in between that, uh, that might not matter. But the fact is, we want to see them used. So just to uh, reiterate my conclusion, business archives are and have to be part of a global archive. Thank you very much.